ஹலோ அண்ட் வெல்கம் டு பியூர் எக்ஸ்பீரியன்சஸ் ஆன்லைன் சத்சங் திஸ் ஆன்லைன் மீட்டிங் இஸ் அன் ஆப்பர்ச்சுனிட்டி ஃபார் ஆல் ஆஃப் அஸ் டு மீட் அண்ட் டிஸ்கஸ் த ஸ்பிரிச்சுவல் மேட்டர்ஸ் அண்ட் ஆல்சோ ஆன்சர் சம் ஆஃப் யுர் கொஷன்ஸ் கிளியர் யூர் டவுட்ஸ் அண்ட் டிஸ்கஸ் வாட் எவர் இஸ் இம்பார்ட்டன்ட் ஃபார் யூ இஷ்யூஸ் ரிலேட்டட் டு யுவர் ப்ராக்டிசஸ் அண்ட் ஆல் அண்ட் வி ஆல்சோ டிஸ்கஸ் த ஆக்டிவிட்டீஸ் ஆஃப் த ப்ரோக்ராம் ஹியர் ஸோ இஃப் எனிபடி ஹேஸ் எனி கொஷின் most welcome to write it, write it down or they can say it if they want to say it peter pan is asking question is experiences are illusion to whom can we say illusion to the experiencer no an experience is illusion or not true or false is simply categorization which is done by the intellect we set up the criteria for truth what is true what is false and we classify the experiences the experiencer is not at all interested in what is true and false and what is illusion and what is not an illusion the experiencer has no concern is simply an observer a witness why do we call them as illusion because they are not the necessary essential part of the existence it simply appears there is something and the intellect decides to call it as illusion and then he is asking true nature of appearance when an appearance is seen there are two components object and experiencer the object is changing the experiencer is unchanging or emptiness without the experiencer an appearance cannot exist there will be no knowledge of the appearance we cannot say whether the experiencer will exist or not without the appearances there has to be an experiencer who will see the experiencer existing alone in this case the first experiencer will become appearance which is not possible experiencer will exist independent of the experiences appearances objects if the experiencer somehow shut down stops the experience then it may exist alone experiencer nature is emptiness so this is not possible second possibility if there is no experience then the experiencer might be able to know that it can exist independently it is also not possible because of the experiencer knows itself then it becomes an experience too so some very good introspection by bito pan here but um, it is all wrong you see we can say that the existence exists alone the whole of the existence exists alone and when there is a possibility mind arises in the existence and it divides it into two which is the experience and the experiencer remember this that you cannot introspect about the experience and the experiencer at the level of duality it is not going to make any sense from the bottom levels no nothing can be said about these so as you go low lower in the levels like you come down to the level of the world the physical world and all then all these things become meaningless so the rule is you can analyze uh, these levels from the from top to bottom not bottom to top the non dual view can throw some light on the dual view which is the experience and the experiencer which you are trying to analyze but uh, at the level of duality nothing will come out of this kind of it is only imaginary whatever you are introspecting is simply imagination of some kind and similarly if you and try to analyze the experiencer and all from the level of uh, the illusion you sit here as a body and then you try, try to grasp the experiencer nothing will be known you need to be the experiencer to know what i am and so on what the experience is so that is why without self realization nothing is known nothing is known you cannot even reach to the non dual state of oneness this should be cleared as long as you are thinking i am the body or i am something else mental activity of some kind then the, the even the level of duality will remain inaccessible you won't be able to think about it properly like when i hear people say my experiencer my experiencer disappeared in the sleep what are they doing they are still at the level of the illusion my means the experiencer must be something which i have that means the i is probably the body mind and that is why they never grasp it 
still there is identification with the body mind and they try to know it from intellect perspective which is impossible you need to be the experiencer which is simply dropping the ignorance at the level of the illusion come out of the illusion and then you can grasp that yes there is an experience there is a mind there is an experiencer the mind is telling you the mind is informing the experiencer that there are two that is the trick of the mind and you drop that ignorance also and then you are left with non dual existence so and this is the progress this is how we progress now when you look at the experience and the experiencer from the point of view of the existence you that will be the correct point of view and you will see that they are always together they are always together there is no possibility that uh, you will find one without the other and actually that is how the intellect knows that they are one so he is saying that without experience there will be there is a possibility of the experiencer no who will tell you that there is an experiencer what will tell you that it is there the truth is our direct experience says and logic says that these two never go away the experiencer never goes away the experience never goes away what is coming and going are the events the kind of experiences they are changing they, the appearance is changing the appearance of the existence is changing that is illusory it will keep changing forever eternally timelessly it was never seen that it stops because how how can it how can that which exists disappear so when we say there is no experience only experiencer then what has happened is that the experience has changed into something which the mind cannot grasp or which is of no use for the mind which does not form the memory which does not impress upon the memory either it has become too subtle for the memory to catch but that state does not last you must have seen it even the deepest meditation you come out of it and then what caused the experience to reappear you will ask this question and because any experience cannot start from nothing it's not possible from nothing only nothing will be produced so what do we say it was there it was not noticed it did not make any impression on the memory and the memory starts functioning which means the mind starts functioning then we say oh, okay there is the experience again but uh, it's it never goes away because it is the existence so this will happen if you do not rise above the level which you are trying to introspect about at the level of duality you can only negate things let me check when did the experiencer go away and you will find no never and then you can check where when did the experience went away no it never goes away whatever are the perceived gaps they are imaginary then is asking experiencer becomes both experiencer and experience experiencer experiencing itself is that what is happening no that is not happening experiencer does not become anything it is changeless it is you your essence is the experience existence becomes the experiencer and the experience existence divides itself and existence is experiencing itself whatever appears is existence whatever knows this appearance is existence and you are that also you are that so he needs to go back and listen again go back in the program and listen again hypothesis based on some experiences the experiencer is not dependent on a particular object but to be there some other object must appear it is always there objects appear and disappear yes it is not dependent on anything at all because it is the existence itself and just like i said the experience is always there also because it is also existence so these are all imaginations that things the experience and the experiencer appear and disappear no it never happens then he is asking golden ornaments metaphor we do not see gold separately always seen a form shape likewise the experiencer is present through the experiences appearances including this body mind and so on since the experiencer is unchanging it is the essence 
will this hypothesis lead me to, to true nature of appearance no the true nature of appearance is a direct experience you can try to investigate the true nature of what is appearing and you will find that it is emptiness so it is not a really hypothesis there is no hypothesis in uh, spirituality no hypothesis it is in the science in uh, the philosophy or spirituality there is only truth or or things are false things are either true or they are false we will never discuss the hypothesis never no theories imaginary things are not allowed assumptions are not allowed so i think um, there is some confusion there in the mind of bitter pen you were given the means of knowledge now why are you running after hypothesis and imaginary ideas why don't you use the means of knowledge and the criteria for truth you were you are given the equipment and you are struggling with the mind you are trying to use hypothesis imagination and thinking as tools to know it's not possible and the proper tools are direct experience and logic see it instead of thinking about it when you have thought about when you are you have seen it then you can think about it thinking is not uh, banned here on the path of knowledge so what is the proper way to sit with the teacher look at what is then write it down without any biases without any preconception that is how we clean the slate and start forming the body of the knowledge that is what we have done in the program also in the videos also sit down take a look at what exists put down the definition that it is all of it and then we ask the seven questions because there is nothing more to know except this these questions isn't it when i say i know something i know answers to these questions through direct experience only so bitter pen is on the wrong path fix your practice fix your sadhana use the means of knowledge your intellect is simply wandering here and there those who think that the direct experience is an hypothesis will never progress matt is asking what is the relationship between memory and concepts see the concept is a abstract structure that resides in the memory concept is a kind of knowledge you can say an idea and uh, as you know all the knowledge resides in memory and knowledge is simply impression of the experiences that are well organized logically and rationally organized the organization happens in the memory so concept is an abstract knowledge and that resides in the memory we are able to do that humans are able to form abstractions concepts like a very good example is the concept of a circle now there is no circle in the world there is nothing like this there are circular objects but the circle is a abstract concept when you draw a circle you have materialized the concept now it is in the form of an experience but it is not a circle so this is how uh, we are able to do the abstraction of our experiences and they reside as knowledge in our memory it is very useful so the relationship is of uh, holding the knowledge the memory holds the knowledge no memory no knowledge then matt is asking what is the relationship between memory and concepts well that is repeat if there is no memory would there be concepts i think i answered that yes you're right there will not be any concept there will not be any kind of knowledge actually and most of our knowledge is concepts only most of it is conceptual but it's very useful and then matt is asking how is existence empty of objects and people in a relative sense they exist but not in absolute sense we cannot say that the existence empty of objects and people isn't it you look at the existence it is full of objects and people what do we say that the essence of these is emptiness we say that they are appearances they are illusions objects and people are illusions including this person who is talking and uh, their their essence comes out to be 
emptiness which means simply that they are unknowable the intellect understands only this which net they are just appearing there is no substance behind it nothing is that which is appearing as objects or people that is what the intellect can say mind can say so uh, we do not we never say that the existence is empty of objects it is full of objects only that emptiness is their nature like the sea is full of uh, waves right but the nature is water their nature is water the waves do not exist as independent object in the sea you cannot uh, grab a wave and uh, take it home it's not possible so no uh, no independent existence of the waves so their essence is the water it is it was the water always that up, was appearing as a wave in various forms of waves circular waves in turbulent waves and in the crashing waves and surfing waves many forms bubbles whirlpools and so on the sea is full of these things but no the essence is water similarly the existence is full of appearances like objects and people and creatures even the non physical things but uh, the the essence is something else the essence is emptiness why emptiness because the, the mind cannot find anything there is nothing to be found some people are happy with this idea that the essence is the experiencer which is okay it is also emptiness that which is seen is the that which is seen existence is both seen and the seer witnessing and the witnessed both they are one so is he is asking in a relative in a relative sense they exist but not in absolute sense. no they don't exist at all you see the relative sense is simply our transactional attitude that we assume that okay there are objects and people because they are useful for survival then we say okay they exist and they are true also but uh, are they true no they are not so the relative way is simply an arrangement you can say it like this but we should always keep in mind that there is nothing there if we accept the relative truth as the truth because okay i need to live my life so i'll just accept that they are true and then that is not called awareness that means the awareness has gone if it is always kept in mind what they are while living a relative life because you see there is no other life there is no absolute life it is a dream so it happens in total falsehood and that is what i say in the video that the survival happens in total falsehood it does not really need truth so if you bring in the awareness of what is true then the survival happens in awareness while being completely false there is no problem now it is false and then it is assumed true and now what something else that is the problem so hopefully that uh, was satisfactory answer you have finished answering these questions if there are any more questions most welcome it was a nice satsang and i hope everybody enjoyed it everybody got their answers and hopefully you are enjoying the program also and i'll meet you next time thank you very much for att attending the meeting